Hi, welcome back. And as you can see, I'm back in the chicken enclosure today. Now, this week's video is a video diary and we'll start it on the 1st of April when Cinnamon, the first of our Buffalo Britain hens to go broody, actually sat in her translate state for the very first time. Now, where we got to at the end of last week in the, in the breeding videos was that we now know that Mr Cogburn is producing eggs which are fertile with our Buffalo Britain hens. So we can actually set those under a broody but we needed a Buffalo Pinton hen to become broody to actually go through that process. Now we could incubate, but we choose instead to use the hens. The hens will turn the eggs, they will regulate the temperature, they will regulate the humidity, so you get the optimum hatch rate. Once they're hatched as well, they will make sure that the chicks know when, where and how to eat that they have enough water and that they are kept warm or cool depending on the temperature that is actually required. Now, young chicks can't regulate their own temperature until they're roughly about seven weeks old when they get their first full proper adult feathers. So someone has to do that. It's either you if you hatch in an incubator using warming plates or heat lamps or you actually get a broody hen to do it all for you. Now buff orpeters make fantastic broody mothers. So we will walk you through that process. Now Cinnamon, our first broody hen, is sat on her eggs. And we hope that you will follow us on this journey. This video will give you information on the decisions we made about is she in the right place and when to actually give her fertilised eggs. But in 21 days time, she will be hatching some chicks. So come back and join us. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. So this is Cinnamon. Cinnamon is our first broody of 2019. Waiting for a chicken to start to want to brood is like waiting for a kettle to boil. But Cinnamon has finally succumbed to the hormonal changes and uh, she sat tight. So. Congratulations, little cinnamon. We're really proud of you. Once a day, broody hens go out and about to stretch their legs. So while cinnamon's outside of the coop, I just want to show you around because we've got a key decision to make this week. Do we leave cinnamon in this coop to sit on some hatching eggs and raise her chicks? Or do we move her to a more suitable coop? Now our only concern with this coop is that it's actually set quite high off the ground. We built it on an old trailer. Now that means that the angle of the ramp has to be very very steep so it's quite long as well and young chicks might find it a problem. We've covered the ramp with some wire mesh to make it easier for chicks. Now on the flip side inside the coop is very comfortable. So there's a nest box at the back which is is beautifully appointed for cinnamon with the eggs and inside it's quite big and roomy to raise the chicks and for the chicks to grow. So this is the alternate coop that cinnamon could actually be in. It's much lower to the ground so the angle of the ramp up to the doorway is much shallower. It's going to be much easier for chicks to actually get in and out. It's got double nest boxes so if for uh, any reason we need to shut the booty in with her chicks we can add food and water to one side and she still has an nest box to actually sit in to protect her brood. What we normally find with this coop though is that the hens tend to sit straight in front of the door so they can just inspect and see what's outside. There are two downsides though with this coop. The first is it's got a side to side opening door which means we can't put auto openers and closers on it. And the other downside is that it has an opening roof. Now that does have some advantages but it also means in high winds the roof can open on its own so we need to weigh it down with bricks. Now as I walk backwards you'll be able to see it does have a very long run on it. Now the purpose of the run is not to keep the booty hen in, it's actually to keep other hens out. What can happen is other hens come in and out, pull the broody hen off, 
get on the nest themselves, fights ensue, eggs get broken, and unfortunately those chicks die before they've even had a chance to hatch. So we actually close those hens off, which means that the booty hen will be let out in a supervised manner once a day. I think this is going to have to be the coop that Cinnamon goes in. But we'll, we'll take overnight to think about it and make a decision in the morning. So we've made the decision to move Cinnamon to her new position. And as you can see, she sat very happily. It might look like a still photograph, but if you look very carefully, you'll actually see her blinking. So she is brooding very, very happily in this coop. We'll leave her 24 hours to make sure she's fully settled and then we will add 12 eggs and hopefully she'll take to those eggs. At the moment she has two eggs which are basically just unfertilised fridge eggs um, so they won't hatch and they won't be part of the full batch. So for now I think we will just let her settle and have a little bit of peace. So we started this video diary on Monday the 1st of April and we're now at Thursday the 4th of April. This has taken us this long to make sure that Cinnamon is fully broody and that she's in the right coop for her and her chicks. What we need to do now is mark up 12 eggs to pop under her. Now these are 12 fertilised eggs and we put individual numbers on them so that we know if they're rolled out from underneath the broody that if she rolls them out again we know that those eggs are bad. Um, if she's just rolled them out accidentally, we pop them under and we won't see them again. So I think it's time for us to finish this little job and then we'll go pop these 12 eggs underneath cinnamon. So here we've got cinnamon sat absolutely beautifully covering her two eggs from the fridge. So I'm just going to lift her out and here you can see that she's gone very puffy and she's making that wonderful what I call eagle chicken noise. Now it's just a case of adding the 12 eggs now and we're taking away the two that she's been sat on that are unfertilised. Now the 12 eggs will be laid on their side in the beautiful ball shaped nest that she's created for her eggs. The idea is that that ball shape means that she can cover every single egg that actually goes into that area and she'll line that with her own feathers as well to make sure that there's less chance of them being broken and they're cushioned from any major movements. So we'll just make sure that they are properly arranged so that she can actually cover them and then I can pop her back in. Now I'm not expecting her to actually sit on the egg straight away. I'm expecting her to walk out and actually go and get some water and food because we'll have temporarily broken her translate state. Now she'll get some food and water and she'll wander back in in a few minutes. So let's come back and see what she does, if she takes to the eggs or if she decides that she doesn't want anything to do with them. So Cinnamon's been out and had some food and water and she started to come in and out of the coop. Now what I don't know is whether at this stage she's actually gonna to take to the eggs. You might hear a deep booming clucking noise that she's making that is a good sign that's a, a noise that it, the booty hens do make on a regular basis but she hasn't actually sat on the eggs yet oh that's a good sign can you see she's actually picking up um, that feather and dropping it now what she's actually doing is making sure that the eggs are protected and that if they roll around they're not going to actually hit each other and break it looks like she may well be taking to these eggs. Yep, she's actually going to sit down on the nest. Now, what she's doing with all of this movement is she's making sure that all of those eggs have contact with her skin because her skin provides the perfect temperature for those eggs to start to incubate. Now, today is Thursday, the 4th of April. 
21 days from today we should see our first chicks hatching from this batch. We should have more broody hens uh, starting to brood in the next few weeks. So don't forget to subscribe and you will see updates on what's happening, plus other videos about our general lifestyle in the small holding that we have. We love to share things with you. Don't forget to rate and comment because your opinions and feedback are really important to us. Is this what you want to see? Do you want to see more advice? Or do you want to just see video diaries of what we're actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis? We look forward to hearing from you and don't forget to subscribe and check back with us. See you soon.